This is Up for Debate, episode number 220, recorded November 11th, 2021. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this ultra-special Sean Vember edition of Up for Debate. I am Sean Jennings, joined by the original Cracker Jack, Mr. Matt Mariani. Hello, Matt. Hello, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sean. How are we doing tonight? I am beyond thrilled to be here. It's one of our signature episodes of the year, uh, and we have got a great crew with us tonight. We sure do. Matt, when I think, uh, well, before we introduce them, let's talk about what we're doing here tonight uh, and leave them in great suspense. Matt, it is Sean Vember, a whole month dedicated to my whims. Uh, last week, we did a Sean theme to this or that, where we learned you know nothing about me. Uh, and this week, we're going to continue. <laughs> if you haven't listened to that one, it's very it's funny. True. <laughs> um, I, I, that's a, it was one of the rare episodes I actually did re-listen to, uh, and it was a hoot, so I recommend it. But, Matt, last I, I year, still do maintain, though, that there was a very easy way to game that contest, and it was to just, you know, take the opposite on whatever I was saying. Take the low whenever I said the high. Take the do you really, hippopotamus do you really whenever I do went this? elephant. Do you really want to do this? Uh, Dan and Colby, you guys didn't listen to last week's episode, right? <laughs> No. no. Okay. Uh, let me ask you guys: uh, Am I a iced coffee guy or a hot coffee guy? Hot coffee. Okay. Yeah. Matt, that's right. Matt got that one wrong. Um, <laughs> am I a a hamburger or a hot dog guy? This one I could hmm. see. I think burgers. I'm gonna say burger. Gonna say I've never dog. seen see? you eat a hot dog. Dan got see? that. It was. Hot I said dog. the same thing. I said the same thing as Colby. I've never <laughs> seen you eat a hot dog, Sean. I, can't, I don't I know maybe, how you can claim are to you, be a hot are dog you a, guy. Are you a latter day hot dog guy? Uh, I was eating like, hot dogs when in college. Did, when did you become a hot? But more recently, I became. I'm a hot dog adult. Um, <laughs> okay. And I'll, I'll give you just one more. Um, which large mammal do I prefer, elephants or hippos? Hippos. Hippos. You're both right. Matt blew that one. So, you know, <laughs> it, it, it may be a Matt problem Ooh, more yes. so than a me problem. No offense. Matt, it was very nice. There's still so much you can learn about me. What a treat. Um, that, this is true. But it's the good, good thing it's, is, Matt... It's good. Bodes well for our friendship because every day will be a new and exciting not adventure. not stale. Uh, but tonight, you don't have to know anything about me to enjoy this evening's episode because the great taste off is back. You may remember last year, we went through six different kinds of cookies, ate and discussed the ones we liked and the one we didn't. And Matt, we had such a good time, we decided to do another great taste off. So we did cookies last year. This year, we're doing cookies, but worse. The crap. <laughs> now, version. quick question. Quick question. Uh, just to do a quick retro on the cookies from last year, did everyone finish all of their cookies? And did were your cooking ha cookie habits altered by the tasting in any way? I think I gained like fifteen pounds in the in the, in the subsequent two weeks. Like I didn't eat all of the cookies, but I ate a lot of the cookies, too many of the cookies. I, I did eat all of the Oreos because Oreos are the best. I, I think I I went on like a sugar hiatus after after the cookie experience. I, I, I just kind of avoided sugar for a couple of like a, probably a period of, of two weeks or so. And I did not finish all of the cookies, but I did eat all of the fig newtons, which I would have for Same. breakfast totally. sometimes, and I enjoyed. It's I, got fruit in it because you right? know what I don't. I never really go out on, and buy fig newtons. It's just not something no, I ever think of, of like not. getting. So, and do you um, now, or now that they've receded back into your back of your nope. mind? Kind of ha haven't thought about them until just now. So, but maybe this weekend I'll, I'll go. I'll go pick some up. Well, you're gonna have plenty of. You know uh, how they had that? Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. I was. I was gonna say. You know how they had that cereal when we were children? They might still have it. It was called like Cookie Crisp or something. It's like Ooh, cookies for breakfast. Yeah. You should definitely make a Fig Newton cereal. I want that. Fig Newtons for breakfast. It yeah. turns the milk figgy. figgy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, that has got to be more nutritionally uh, healthy than Pop-Tarts. So, sure. Uh, yeah. I, I totally buy that. 
and it'll make yeah. you regular. It, it's basically a, a neutral green card. <laughs> um, no, I ended, it was funny because this time last year, well, in Sean Tember, uh, I was right in the middle of moving. And so I had a big box of a bunch of barely eaten cookies, and I had to decide whether it was one more box I was willing to move. And the answer was I wasn't. So most of them ended up in the reject pile, unfortunately. I, I just couldn't do it. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I, I ended up bringing mine to work and just giving them away, most of the cookies. Also, Chips Ahoy doesn't have a great shelf life after it's been opened. No. no. I think they come out of the factory no. stale. Yeah, and they're not resealable, <laughs> which is something yeah. I appreciate about the crackers. As I was opening them, I was like, I like that these come in more discreet smaller units that can be unsealed and then keep most of the box still fresh. The individual sleeves. I, I have a theory for that. I, I think your average cracker eater is very different from your average cookie eater. I think mm. uh, your your cookie eater is probably buying the cookies for a party or maybe a group of children, their children. Whereas I think the cracker eater is probably like staying home. Well, there's nothing wrong with this. Like, but they're probably like hanging out on a Friday night, like reading a, a good book and going to bed at at, at eight p.m. sharp. That sounds That's like probably a good your average night. cracker eater, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we, guys, we've got six crackers we're going to get through tonight. I do want to make sure though we formally introduce our two guests this evening. You may remember them from last year or as the co-hosts of the Don't Panic podcast. Uh, two guys that exemplify the term cracker. It is Dan and Colby. <laughs> Good evening. When I think cracker, I think of these two gentlemen. Uh, guys, Sean's yeah. been waiting for weeks to make Literally that the first thing I thought of when I decided to do crackers. So <laughs> uh, it was a good call. Thanks for joining, guys. Anytime. That's what, Thrilled to be any, here. Anytime I offer to send you a box of snacks, uh, we, we can hop right on. Lena was very excited. She remembered the cookies. And so when I was like, oh, Sean, we went to the mailroom. Like, Sean sent us a box. She's like, ooh, what is it? Um, this one, this is a bit healthier, though. A bit. Not by well, much. Yeah, maybe. lower sugar, <laughs> higher salt. So pick right. your poison. Right. Very high salt. Trade um, it's, it's savory, not sweet. Um, and so I have picked what I would describe as four of America's most popular crackers and one wild card. Uh, and guys. What's the fifth? I meant to say five of America's most popular and then the uh, nut fence, which there we go. I don't know if I would define it as popular, <laughs> but why don't we... I'm excited. I'm very excited to try the nut fence. It's the only one I've, I have not uh, tried so far. I've what? never had a club, uh, whatever this is. Oh, the club cracker? A Kellogg's mm. club. The club. I don't it, think. I mean, it looks like any other cracker. Maybe I have It's similar to the Ritz. It, they're going right. to be similar. I think it's a little less buttery and a little more thin. But uh, just for the folks at home playing along, you can go pause it now, go to the store, get crackers. You can play along with us. We have right. saltines, club crackers, Ritz, Triscuit, wheat thins, and uh, almond nut thins. So those are our sixth selection. I have another question for the group. Coming into tonight, before see, before we tried any of these, and including ones that we don't have, if you were to had to pick your favorite cracker, like. You, you're going to get one cracker for a party. What cracker are you going to get today? That's good. Graham Dude. cracker. No, stop Graham that. cracker. No, that Graham crackers count. are delicious. Stop that. I, I'm, they are I'm delicious. I'm a little disappointed that we are not having Graham crackers. Get that sweet cracker nonsense out of here. Graham crackers. They're delicious. Graham was a let's lunatic. Call, let's call a biscuit a biscuit, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I love Graham crackers. That's the, that would be my choice. But second, close second would probably be uh, wheat thins. Okay, Sean, I'm a I'm oh, a. Colby? Oh, go ahead, Sean. I am a uh, aggressive Triscuit guy. Triscuit is like if there's a cracker platter, I'm going immediately for the Triscuit because it's got the fun texture. I, I to me, crackers are boring texture wise. That's why I'm excited to try the nut thin because it is a little bit different. But the Triscuit just is so much more fun to eat. What about you, Colby? Yeah, I was gonna say the exact same thing. I love I love Triscuits, but like like a fine wine or a package of Chips Ahoy, they have a they they decline rapidly after you yeah after you open them. Not that they're bad like the next day, but they're noticeably less good the next day. 
For me, another pandemic discovery for me was Trader Joe's Social Snackers, which I think resemble maybe the, the Club Crackers, uh, but are salty and delicious. Trader Joe's has an, a, like a very <laughs> impressive cracker assortment. Like, they make the non-crackers... Are, are really good. Mm-hmm. They make them like are those. Are those cookies? No, they're they crackers. Just bread. They're just, uh, yeah, like flatbread crackers. Non. Kind of taste a little bit like non. Non. Oh. Uh, 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 oh. Did you think fresh. I said non? N O N non. Yeah, oh, that, that, I, I knew it. I knew it. I was trying to make a non cracker. Does seem like something Trader Joe's would have though? Trying to be right, and I, I googled that, and I found a Trader Joe's everything but the gluten crackers. I'm like, I guess that's kind of like a non-cracker. A Norwegian yeah. crisp bread. Hmm. Nice. Um, I'm gonna have to look out for these. This is a good tip. And, and there's a good uh, a good dip that I that I found that goes with it uh, is the everything but the bagel seasoning dip. Hmm. It's, it's really good. Oh. It's like a it's like a yogurt based dip. But it's got the everything but the bagel, like every kind of like everything bagel spices blended in with the 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 yogurt. I, I like the idea of this snack where everything is defined in terms of what it's not. It's not mm. a cracker, and it's everything. It's, and it's, it's not everything a bagel. except this other thing. <laughs> this is a, a cracker for the modern the modern era. <laughs> right. Well, what I'm things? like as we're sitting here talking about crackers. I'm I'm feeling like I really should have brought it like something to put on the crackers. It's funny you should. Matt came that. prepared. Anybody, yeah. Did no one else brought things? I was going to and forgot. Okay. I so did. I've I got... thought about it for five seconds and then I never. I took no action. Trader Joe's chocolate hummus. Um, which I have not tried yet. But I, I'm, I'm looking forward <laughs> to trying that. I've got. Is it um, sweet? Yeah, chocolate. Hum- I've had chocolate hummus before, but not Trader Joe's chocolate hummus. It's good. It's really good. It tastes. tastes chocolate hummus like brownie obsessed. batter. Oh, it's so good. It's too Why? thick. Why, Sean? It obsess your your Mediterranean roots. Is that your are your uh, that's your right. Mediterranean it's ancestry? <laughs> yeah. It's an abomination. It's a betrayal of of, uh, of what hummus should be. I brought. Uh, some jelly from my refrigerator. <laughs> I, I wanted to like the squeeze the bottle. Perspective of the easier, camera makes I... that look like a huge tub of jelly. <laughs> yeah, the perspective is what <laughs> the enormous amount of jelly. It's uh, yeah, it's actually it's pretty hefty, and locally sourced honey, also from oh. Trader Joe's. Oh. Oh. So, looking forward to. I have this one is wildflower honey. You know that it's it's crazy all the different kinds of honey. Oh, okay. Put that one in the in the. Uh, oh, will the great snack off be honey next time? Maybe for the next snack off, different different varieties of honey. Because I was gonna say they have wildflower honey. They've got. Uh, yeah, Halloween candy. Like, Any uh, leftover Halloween candy for your? Uh, I, I can put your, that on a Triscuit. I got a I got a Snickers here. Nice. Up for my nut then. I don't know. They've got lots of different kinds of honey. I'm looking forward to it. When I was on Nantucket, I bought a cranberry honey. Hmm. Honey made How with do the cranberries. Bees get cranberries? I, haven't had, I haven't tried it yet. I haven't tried it yet. It's still in my in my uh, in my basement, which I'm realizing now. Oh yeah. Uh, I, I think it's safe. I think it's good. Probably didn't get any water on it. <laughs> this is probably okay. But it's yeah, cr- nice cranberry honey. And well, are you guys uh, are you guys ready for our first cracker? Oh, I'm ready. Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. So we're going to start simple and work our way up to the exotic. And we're going to go with the classic saltines first, I think. So these are a Target brand Market Pantry saltine crackers. I think I paid about three cents for this box. They're very reasonably priced. So let's make a lot of noise. Ugh. And they go, oh, Wait, sorry. Which one are we doing first? The saltine. saltine. I don't even know the last time I had a saltine cracker. It's been a long time. I think our listeners really respect the ASMR aspect of our yeah. of our shit. If, if, if there's a technical name for like the fear and dislike of hearing people chewing, I forget the name of it. 
If that applies to you, you might as well skip the whole episode. <laughs> I gotta be honest. Bail out! Ugh. I was trying to, like... These are awful. Yeah. These they're are not like... as good as I remember. These are... No, they're store brands, so they're not the official saltine brand, but... It was like tort, like honestly, communion wafers are better than these. <laughs> <laughs> they already seem stale. No, and they're not particularly salty. No. Mm. Yeah, these are. say copyright twenty twenty on my box. Oh boy, Target, you son of a bitch. Well, it's hundred percent. Reminds April me of. Uh, reminds me of being sick. I feel yeah, like I would have yeah. like this with soup if I was like homesick from like school Best or by something. April 2021. Then on the inside it does say August 30th, or sorry, Best by April 2022. But on the inside it has a date August 30th, 2021. So maybe that is when it was manufactured. Well, it says 100% satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. So hey, they have to out. No, a, yeah, we, we can boxes. start doing this stuff for free. Mm. It would have been fun if one of the boxes contained expired crackers, but Sean didn't tell us which one. Mm. <laughs> Somebody gets violent, Leo. Yeah, these are, um, mm. these are like eating paper. Yeah. I feel like saltines are the kind of thing you're supposed to, like, literally put in soup. Like, they're not meant to be that eaten out. on their own. They're oh, meant to be that, rehydrated. That chocolate that hummus chocolate. that looks so unpleasant. Chocolatey hummus spread you on You really the, got some on there. The visuals are... Awful. I once bought. I went to a deli at a supermarket and I got like half a pound of ham or something, and they gave me a free container of chocolate hummus. I did not get the connection. <laughs> what did you buy? I, don't know. I bought hmm. deli meat, like like ham or something, and they're like, "Oh, if you get a pound of boar's head, we'll give you a free container of chocolate hummus." Oh, that was, was like probably because it was going to expire, and they wanted to. Get, they wanted to. They didn't want to throw it out. It was awful. How, how was that chocolate hummus for you, Matt? That was really good. Did not really go with the saltine. Saltine <laughs> is not an ideal cracker. It did leave a very nice imprint. Very cool looking imprint in the hummus. I don't know <laughs> oh, you there you see. go. You got some nice lines. You got like a nice like a nice carving out of the out of the hummus. And but the yeah, thing definitely I'd say not where it. I would go with it. I'll see if these the, saltines see if the, have like no honey's a little they better. They have no backbone. They're very flaky, very fragile. This is a yeah, brand new try, but not in a good honey. Way. Right. I predict that the honey is going to be the the favorite here for the saltines. But I think, like Colby said, maybe uh, oh, I'm going to get it on my microphone. Thanks. <laughs> That's what. So if I if I could do this ideal. all over again, I would have. For the show tonight, I would have rolled by Whole Foods and I would have gotten a, a cup of their New England clam chowder, yes. and that that is the vessel. But uh, I'll say, an for oyster which cracker I is better than the saltine. Oyster crackers are amazing. You know, it's like, can you buy a box of oyster oh, crackers? Yeah. I've never thought. I've only ever eaten oyster crackers in the little packet. I'm sure, that Amazon will it. sell you like ten thousand oyster crackers. <laughs> Oh, baby. Again, that's another, like, pour it in a bowl and have it for breakfast type of thing. Just all those little oyster crackers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe it's good that they only give you, like, the little uh, the little packets of restaurants. <laughs> On Amazon, the, the smallest amount of oyster crackers you can buy is 12 9-ounce bags, which is almost 7 pounds. Or 300 half-ounce crackers. Pound pouches, which would be 150 ounces, maybe which would be what, almost 10 pounds. Maybe that's what the taste off will be next year. Is instead of doing a, a small amount of a lot of things, we'll just do a large amount of one thing. Um, and it'll <laughs> right. just be like four pounds of crackers of, of oyster crackers. Oyster cracker challenge. And, and maybe right, maybe it's a challenge, and we have to use all of all of the crackers. Like, yeah, like oh, like the buffalo. The chopped. <laughs> you open the chop basket, it's just crackers. I don't know. I don't know. What am I going to make out of this? It's saltines and oyster crackers. I immediately run over to the ice cream machine. Got to do something with this. Um, 
So that doesn't sound bad. Let's, uh, let's rate pate. this. Let's rate the saltine on a scale of one to five. Um, five being the best. Um, where where do we rank this? I'm happy to go first. I'm going to give it a solid zero. That was torture. Uh, what what about you, Matt? <laughs> Is zero um, va- is zero a valid value or zero being, is the uh, lack of a score? It's nothingness. It didn't even qualify as a one. Yeah, so okay. these saltines are pretty rough. They're rough. I, I actually it, the weirdest thing is, I, I tried it with all the different dippings that I brought here today, and it was actually somehow better plain than it was with any of the dippings. And that's not to say that it was even that particularly good plain. It was just like pre- preferable it, it like nothing could enhance it. it 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 just like everything that it, you put on it just made it taste like the saltine is the one that didn't belong i give it a half a point i give it a, a point 0.5 just because it was it was something it was like uh it, it was it was it was when you're sick i guess so you could have like saltines you could put them in your in your soup but add, it adds something to your soup theoretically right you know you like you're mac, like stir it around but i'd rather have the oyster crackers i guess yeah what about you colby yeah i'm gonna say it like a one yeah i don't know you gotta start somewhere i guess <laughs> we're only up from here what about you dan uh, since, since we're using zero i guess i'll also say one at least it didn't taste bad but that's the you know that's the best i could say about it it was neutral tasting didn't like the texture. Didn't have enough. Didn't seem to have enough structure to really hold up to a good like hummus scoop. Like if you put too much hummus on it, it would probably just snap off. Right in the hummus thing. Then you got to dig it out. Ugh, little oh, crumbs yeah. everywhere. And, yeah. Um. Well, that was a, our baseline. We're moving up from here now. I did pull the most popular cracker brands in America by sales. Uh, number one and two are Cheez It and Goldfish which Goldfish I don't really consider a cracker, uh, and cheese it I didn't want anything flavored. But number three is the next one, so it's the most popular of the ones we have tonight, and that's going to be your classic round Nabisco Ritz. So if you want to crack three. open your, your buttery... I don't know My if they fingers have, like, are uh, all they, sticky from the honey. They don't really have a description oh, of what Ritz, Ritz is. is. I've got hand sanitizer. Isn't that like a... A Family Guy joke or something, or something like I got a honey all over this, <laughs> this <laughs> thing. I got a honey all over my microphone. <laughs> like a bear attacks him or something. <laughs> yeah. I can see that. It sounds like a Family Guy joke. Right, here we go. The Ritz was introduced in 1934 by Nabisco. It actually nearly. 1900s, the Jackson Cracker Company developed a small round cracker called the Jackson. Um, and when it was bought out by Nabisco, they changed the name to the Ritz. Mm. That is nice. Yeah, that's much better. Hmm. Now, let's compare some nutrition labels on these things. <laughs> oh no! Now, for five crackers of the saltines, you got 60 calories, 125 milligrams of sodium. For five crackers of the Ritz, same serving size, um, 80 calories, and 130 grams of sodium. Not even that much more sodium. Five more grams of sodium, it tastes like way better. I was going to say, what's the fat difference? (laughs) So much better. That's a good point. Uh... Now, this is how they get you, because they're using, like, different units here and stuff. Total fat, 1.5 grams on the saltine. Total fat, 4.5 grams on the wrist. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of oil, canola oil, palm oil, uh, riboflavin. Mm. All the good stuff. Gotta love that riboflavin. I, I love feel like riboflavin made an appearance in the cookie episode, too. Am I wrong about it's that? Oh, no, you're right. No, I did. Well, you know the we, show we is a lot about the show is sponsored by Riboflavin. <laughs> They're one of our sponsors. <laughs> Check them out. Use, the, use uh, offer code up for debate uh, when you buy <laughs> your Riboflavin. The, 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 the Riboflavin, Riboflavin uh, industry right marketing group. <laughs> yes, regular monthly deliveries of Riboflavin. Never be without. 
That's a, that's now, a good Ritz, cracker. Ritz, I have I have fond memories of. Um, this would be like my after school snack often. I would have them with jam or, mm -hmm. or jelly or peanut butter and jelly. Or or I would have them with tuna fish. Yes. And that's a good famously, one. Famously tuna fish. There was one day where I was feeling brave and experimental. And I took my jelly crackers, my peanut butter, my, my jelly, my, I would typically have, like, I'd make a plate, half of them would be jelly, and half of them would be peanut butter. Like I said, I was feeling brave and experimental one day. I made half a plate with jelly, like I typically do, and I made half a plate with the tuna fish. And I decided to combine them because I was, like, dumb, <laughs> maybe in, like, sixth grade or something, and it it tasted about like you would imagine. I didn't discover any kind of new secret formula. I think just we could do, like, we could do a sweet, whole episode tuna. on just the wacky things you tried as a child in the kitchen. <laughs> Because the stories I've heard, I have like six yep. of them I can think of, just off the top of my head. Of just I was going to say, was... I feel like this was a recurring theme at your wedding, actually, Matt, was weird shit that you've done in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the, uh, the, this was, I think, around the same time I tried to make M&M milk, which I just took a glass which, of by milk. By the way, Dan, just... I was going to say, can Dan, can you guess how about... you make M&M milk? <laughs> I'm going to guess you just take the M&M's, put them in the milk, and then you, like, bubble tea. You just get them sometimes. <laughs> That's yeah. such a good idea. I, essentially, you just take a glass of milk, and you pour a bit, like, you pour a bag of M&M's in it. <laughs> the milk is, is actually kind of cool, because the milk turns, like, a cool rainbow, like, swirl color. That one, I, that one was, like, I mean, and then you just have a bunch of wet, soggy M&M's at the bottom, but... I thought maybe it would make the milk ch like chocolatey tasting because of the M and M's, but the coating, the candy coating around the outside is obviously so thick and like not not really permeable. So the chocolate just stays on the inside. It just gets kind of like soggy. Um, but the dye, like the dye from the M and M's, gets pulled off so that they become like these shells, like almost like like very dull, almost like like uh, almond colored shells. And uh, I feel like I could probably, if TikTok were around back then, I probably could have done a TikTok <laughs> about that. Yeah, man, I think if you were, would have been born like 15 years later, you'd be a TikTok star right now. You know what? I think I think you're right. At minimum, just we got to get a cookbook If not, deal. just for my culinary explo exploits. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, maybe it's not too late. I don't know. I don't. I don't have a TikTok. <laughs> I don't. I don't have late. a TikTok either. But they say it's never too late. Sean has, has a TikTok. Yeah. <sighs> I, yeah, my secret TikTok. I don't tell you about. In which I cook all of, all of Matt's recipes. Um, what do we he uses uh, what, it to just you just bitches about me on the TikTok all the time. Oh, I'll do that to your face. Just, I don't just need had another a recording TikTok with Matt. That. This guy, can you believe it? <laughs> Uh, what are our what are our thoughts and scores on on Ritz here, uh, Colby? Maybe you can go first. Uh, what what, are, what do you think about the Ritz cracker? I'm gonna give it a four. Like the saltine, I think a Ritz cracker is a cracker that needs soup. But like, wow, it's so much better than a saltine cracker. If I was if I had to like sit and eat plain crackers, I would much rather it be Ritz crackers than yeah. saltines. Must be the riboflavin. Riboflavin. Mm -mm. Get yours today. What about uh, what about you, Dan? If a social snacker is a five, I give a rice cracker a four and a half. I I could keep, I had to stop myself. Yeah, yeah. I I totally agree. They are, uh, they're buttery, which is I think the biggest difference. Is yeah. for me a cracker can't just be like straight salt. It, it's got to have a secondary flavor, and I think it's it's a really nice buttery, soft cracker. Um, so I I would give it probably a four out of five as well. What about what about you, Matt? And Matt, how did it do with the uh, with the uh, dips as well? 
Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that the jam was the winner here. Definitely the jam on the on the cracker that brings back so many pleasant memories of childhood. Um, I would say that the Ritz cracker, it, the buttery, t- it's the buttery texture, and it's also the like fortification of it. It's got like more of a crunch, and it's got more staying power than the saltines. It doesn't just crumble. Um, <laughs> it, it's it, it can hold up, and you can dip it. And I I give my Ritz a four point five out of five. The only flaw being, and I I I could be wrong, but I don't. I think there's a there's a big market for more flavors of Ritz. So Ritz executives out there, if you're listening, I think <laughs> we need like your sour cream and onion Ritz and your everything bagel Ritz and your cool ranch Ritz. cheese Ritz, which which probably exists. I would say like I was going to say like they definitely kind of have flavored, flavored Ritz. Do they yeah. have the flavors yeah, I mentioned there's... though, like sour cream and onion? I've never seen them. Well. I will say a personal favorite of mine is they have a roast. They have Ritz roasted vegetable, which is very good. They also have a, a garlic okay. butter and everything, like an everything bagel, okay. um, honey I wheat. They don't, they don't go crazy with like, and then they have like Ritz thins and some other varietals that aren't quite Ritz. But um, but in the classic Ritz, no, they don't really go any too crazy with the flavors. Pizza Ritz, like uh, like the pizza Pringles, pizza licious. Pringles, Ritz, mm, and you Lich, put, put Ritz, some pepperoni on pizza top Ritz, of that. Lich, Ritz, delicious pizza. I would buy Ritz, Ritz in crackers. a like Pringles esque tube. Yeah, tube. I just like pop maybe, them. maybe Pringles patented that. Maybe that's why they can't do it. You can't do the, the Ritz tube. would be perfect for that. Yeah, I have but, found a blog that reviews Trader Joe's crackers. Hmm. Exploring Trader Joe's blogspot.com and they don't have the non crackers. Can you believe it? But they got the seeded mango and ginger crisps, the uh, tree tree cheese, tiny edamame crackers. Does does Trader Joe's ship? No. Dang. Because I was gonna say Famously, they might be no. next year. Probably they do a random Trader Joe's ship. That would be fun. We could just. I would I would be willing to go like physically go to a Trader Joe's to yeah, like get same. stuff. Same once a year. Yeah, like, I go I can, almost I can, every weekend. I can swing that. I've never ever been to a Trader Joe's in my life because I've never Good lived trip. anywhere that had Trader Joe's. Oh man, we might have a special guest soon. Trader Joe himself. <laughs> the Trader <laughs> Joe. Oh, sorry, I didn't, didn't know you guys were friends. Hello. Uh, I went to the. Uh, I went to the. Hey, is it? The first. This is Laura. Um, Matt's never met Laura. Oh, that's Matt. Hello. Nice to Hello. meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> We've heard only great things. We've heard only great things. That's good. Yeah. This is good. Do you want to stick around for a cracker? Okay. Well, yeah, we're anyway. You just wrapped up Ritz, wrapped and, up now Ritz. We, uh, and now we now uh, we're going to move on to our next cracker here. Uh, it is uh, uh, after Ritz. Uh, after Ritz, it is the, uh, is the, uh, the uh, of the uh, ones we have tonight, the fourth best selling cracker in America. I think it's going to be right in between that saltine and the Ritz. We're going to go for the club cracker. I'm uh, excited for this one. From the folks at Kellogg. Folks so this Kellogg. is that. It's it's it looks more like a saltine visually, but it's sort of uh, long and rectangular. It resembles the Social Snack Rat love so dearly. Uh, my, really quick, my Trader Joe's story is the first suburban Trader Joe's I went to that you would drive to was this one near the Canadian border, and they had heavy security, like just tons of security guards. And I found out it's because Canadians in the before times, would, back when you could do this, would drive down, bulk buy as much as they could, and then resell on the Canadian side because there are no Trader Joe's in Canada. Yep. That's awesome. We can go up and get prescription medication. They come down and get Trader Joe's. So those knackers. Mm. These are nice. This is pretty good. Pretty good. Mm. Wow, we are ratcheting up the calorie count here, Sean. These are seventy. And a lot of fat. And a lot of fat. A lot of fat. Five grams more fat. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it's not even the. Yeah, is, not even I can't remember if the Pali or the Mana was the uh, is the good pattern. Yeah, I don't think it is. Mm-hmm. These are good though. They are really good. Very buttery. But what I like, yeah. this is a better salt. Like the so Ritz, I wouldn't compare to a salt. To me, this is like what a salt is. Like um, because it is that thin, sort of a little crispier than the Ritz. It's quite as soft. Um, but it still has that buttery flavor of the Ritz. So these are uh, these are really nice. This is to me a Ritz is not a good charcuterie board type of you know like I don't want because it's a big and it's a little thick to me this is a great like oh I'm going to layer stuff on top of it yeah and despite its name yeah. the Ritz is, does not it doesn't have a high class um, pedigree no these are club you have them at the country club <laughs> <laughs> well, you cut cut the the hummus. Yeah. not a good hummus cracker mm, I can see that it's saltier yeah. than the Ritz I feel like I must have had these crackers before, but, like, I didn't know they were this good. Yeah, these are really nice. Hmm. Okay, yep. I can tell why they're not. They're uh, they're definitely a honey a honey cracker. Much like the saltines are. Mm. But they are buttery, similarly to the Ritz. I don't think I'm going to be able to sleep tonight, all this sugar. <laughs> mm. Mm. Enough salt and sugar to knock you sideways. Whew. Mm. I want you to know I purposely skipped lunch for this. Oh boy, you're not getting much uh, healthy calories out of this, unfortunately. <laughs> nope. Can't help you there. Not at all. These are really now, good. Now, these eggs. don't come in any fun flavors or anything. So you basically just get what you get with these. That's funny because it has it says original on the packaging. So mm-hmm. what? Why do they even specify that? Thing? Uh, well, they do have a multi-grain and a reduced fat, which I would argue aren't really flavors. Okay. Uh, but I will say, <laughs> just bad. I think it's, and this is a total guess. I have no evidence that this is true. This is just the marketing guy and me. But my guess is a lot of people have tried to name because club is such a generic term, and probably a term that existed before these. That they're like the original, you know, kind of like classic Coke. It's kind of like original Club Cracker, um, you know. Except no, except no. Substitute. Can we, can we all turn around our boxes and yeah. look at this charcuterie board in the back yeah, because it's insane. They have wow. boiled eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and they have respect. cinnamon rolls. Mini iced cinnamon buns. Yeah, they, they the call it a brunch. It's a brunch breakfast sausage patties, yeah. and then fruit and, and cheese and crackers and stuff. I'm so there's ricotta the... cheese. Now this is Ham. this is very like this is like European breakfast. Like if you <laughs> if you're in Europe and you're staying at a hotel and there's breakfast at the hotel, this Are you is pointing what the at the, the gauge, Sean. The, well, that, oh. I was going to say, Colby, Colby, it's a great point. The only thing it's missing is, like, very thinly shaved raw fish. <laughs> and then, then totally. you've got a European yeah. breakfast. Yeah. But, yeah, also, I love this gauge here that says that is easy, breezy, or piece of cake. So, like, it doesn't matter what it is. It's always easy. Well, but I would think, right, yeah. piece of cake should be easier than easy, right? Yeah, I would say so. So, so then, because <laughs> this is easy, it's actually the most difficult. It does, I mean, it's pretty hard. you got to boil these eggs. you have to acquire these cinnamon buns somehow and cook this breakfast sausage. What I'm noticing with the eggs, right, the hard-boiled eggs, is that um, there's 11 of them, which wouldn't, doesn't make sense unless somebody, somebody <laughs> ate half of an egg. <laughs> right. The chef's tax. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> one for me and one for the. For That's the what board. they call a boiler's dozen. Mm. I mean, yeah, yeah there's it only doesn't. four orange slices, which is way fewer slices than would be in an actual orange. Yeah, where'd it go? I feel like the cinnamon buns are what makes this weird. Not necessarily the egg, the eggs are uh, portion. The eggs are weird. They're and the, and the, the sausage rolls, like a sausage put a sausage, patties, sausage roll. That's number four. <laughs> yeah, breakfast sausage patties. See, see when when we opened these crackers, the club crackers, 
I thought what we were opening was the uh, townhouse flip sides, like the round ones, like the long the oval rinses. ones. Yeah, yeah, which are like fine. They're fine, but these ones, these are amazing. It's interesting that they advertise the townhouse flip sides on the back. They, they must also be made by Kellogg. It is. It's the same company. And townhouse now, crackers. This blew my mind. Yeah. Go ahead. The uh, on the side they have a. Cheese, it's cheese and ham with like a drizzle of honey on the side of it. Mm. Uh, so maybe the implication is that you're supposed to make like creative combos of things on the back, like. And you I guys, don't know. so my, my... <laughs> like a raspberry <laughs> and a hard boiled egg, <laughs> a hard boiled egg and a cinnamon roll on top of a cracker and milk. <laughs> Do you guys have you ever done? Have you ever done that where you go to an event and there's like a cheese and cra- there's like a spread like a charcuterie board or something like that? I never stack the items. I eat them one at a time. I never. Yeah, I, that's I, what I was I, saying. That's what blew I'm my just mind. Not creative. I, I, I don't know. I'm not. I don't make a sandwich out of them. Right. I no. I just I take like little pieces and put it on my plate and I eat them like like a like a dignified human being. I don't I don't try to. <laughs> Make combos, but maybe, maybe we're doing it all wrong. Maybe we're the we're the ones that are doing it wrong. We are the force to be club crackers. Now, I'll put cheese yeah. on a cracker on one well, of those plates. That's reasonable, right? Yeah, but, uh, yeah you make I suppose you could do like four separate ingredients on top of your cracker. <laughs> that's too much. It's, yeah, you, it doesn't hold up. Now, I've seen honey on a charcuterie board before. But usually it's just, like, kind of squirted right on the board. And you can't, yeah, like, right. pick it up and put it on top of the cheese on top of the cracker. So I always just end up kind of dipping into it. But it, no, it this, sounds this a lot is, better with cheese. This explicitly says pot of honey. A whole pot. It's number 15. <laughs> pot of honey. <laughs> it quantifies it. Shaved uh, maple glazed ham. So let's go around real quick and two, here, and just uh, there, there's there. I just noticed there are two separate containers of whipped cream cheese. Oh, I see. Regular and veggie flavor. Okay. Mm. Okay. So they they they've got for the because I that's that just seems like a, an awful lot of cream cheese on that board. <laughs> it's just like an overload. <laughs> So let's go around real quick and just shout out a number where 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 you're going to rank um, the club crackers. I'm going to probably give it if I gave Ritz a four, I'm probably going to give this like a four and a half. I'm going to put just just above the just above the Ritz. What, what about you, Dan? At five, it's just as good as Social Snackers. Nice, good. How about you, Matt? Yeah, this is a tough. It's a tough competitor for Ritz. I think it's it's got. All the goodness of of the Ritz, plus it's more of a um, more of like a, 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 a it's like a snack you can like pile a bunch of things on and, and make a sandwich out of it. Probably more structurally sound than Ritz too. Uh, yeah, I, I'll probably give it a five. Yeah, it's a solid wow. cracker. Colby. Yeah, I'm gonna say four and a half too. Laura said four out of five. Nice. So it's been pretty, other than the saltines, we've been pretty positive tonight. So yeah. let's go ahead and move on. We're, we're, we're going out of your sort of classic buttery original cracker and moving into some of the more po- what I would call a party cracker. Uh, let's grab those party. wheat thins. Now we have the original flavor, 100% whole grain wheat thins. They do come in a number of flavors, including ranch, cracked pepper, tomato and basil. They also have wheat thins big. Which are like a bigger, and they should just call them wheat thicks. So a huge missed opportunity there. I'll write that joke for them. Um, but let's now. Aren't the big wheat thins thinner than the small wheat thins? I, from the picture, they just look like a bigger split. So they're, they're like taller and wider, but not necessarily thicker. May, maybe I'm thinking of something else, but I I'm pretty sure there is a varietal of wheat thin that is. It is like larger and thinner than. than whoa, the whoa! Now things. we're getting we're getting back to bags here. Yeah. Uh, Not individual sleeves. We're, and I, yeah, we're, we're we're done with sleeves. Oh man! We're out of sleeve pal. That's interesting. Oh man, they're wow. really making me work for this here. 
child proof. And again, Dan, I'll point out, nutritionally, we continue to get worse. Yeah. We're better on calories, but this has way more sugar. Wait, we are? Yeah. Oh, because it's 16 pieces, though. Well, yeah, by volume, because that's 31. Uh, that's about twice as many compared to the club cracker, so it's not... It's about as, uh, as uh, caloric as the club cracker. Mm. What do we think of the wheat things? These are loud. These are a loud cracker. Yeah. They're very stiff. It doesn't like taste wake up as whole caloric as a club cracker, though. It tastes, it tastes healthier. like it should be healthier. You can taste the whole grain a little bit mm. more. The grain is a little more complex. And they're not, I wouldn't say like, they're, they're not really buttery or mm. salty. They're kind of just grainy. Okay. It's a hummus cracker. Oh, yeah. This is a, <laughs> not a jam cracker. Not a honey cracker. This, this is a dip is a cracker, hummus cracker all day long because it doesn't really have a big signature flavor on its own. Hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. And if I were buying these on my own, I would probably get a flavored variety. I don't know if I would just get the plain original. Like this and like a ranch or something would be very good. You know what? This is a good veggie dip cracker. Yes. Yep. Yep. Veggie dip all day. Or like an this. onion yep. dip or something. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's not a bad cracker. And I do I do kind of like the small size. I think they're fun. I was talking uh, earlier about mini Doritos. Um, I, I like mini snacks. I get mini pretzels now, and the little pretzels are like that big. And so I do like the small size. Dan's just putting them down. He's just thinking and he's putting them down. I'm back to the Ritz. <laughs> oh, no. The Ritz are hard to put away. Yeah, they're good. That's why they're they the really most popular. Hmm. My sweatshirt's covered in crumbs. <laughs> Hazard of the job. <laughs> Any, uh, any I have other... to keep muting my mic when I'm eating these because I feel like they're so loud. I'm not. Like these are the loudest crackers. So... Like it's part of the show. Folks better like it. Any other uh, thoughts on wheat thins? Yeah. Um. Yeah. The box is not as exciting. Uh, it really. It seems to me to be more pivoted at a healthier <coughs> snack, which is bullshit. Yeah. But they do really push right, the whole grain. Is... No artificial flavors or colors. Yeah, it's interesting that it's less healthy than a Ritz cracker and just as unhealthy as the club cracker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the cracker that lies to you. This <laughs> is the liar cracker. Put that on the box. The, the serving size is much larger than the Ritz, though. Well, and even right. by weight. Like, Ritz's serving size is only... Uh, What's that? You get 16 grams for a Ritz for 80, and 30 grams for these is, what, 140 calories? Oh. So I guess a Ritz, a Ritz is a little, just slightly less healthy. But it's, See, but it's this not is just like... an example of how loud these crackers are. I was chewing the cracker while Colby <laughs> was talking about serving size. I definitely thought he said circumcised. <laughs> <laughs> Why would he say that? I was trying to figure that out, and then I re then Dan responded, and they were talking about serving size. So I, I was thinking about what does he mean? Like the, the crack? <laughs> Get your mind on the gutter, <laughs> man. I thought he said something like, "Now this cracker is circumcised." <laughs> Trying to think of what the hell he meant by that. <laughs> but see, that's because the wheat thins are so loud. I was chomping away at them. It was I couldn't hear anything. One other thing I'll point out is they're not available in the U.S., but there is a varietal of wheat thins in their artisan cheese line, Wisconsin Colby. There you go. Yeah. Wait, what? The 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 flavor? It's a flavor of wheat thins, Col Colby thins. Yes, Colby. They're called Colby thins. Col Col oh, wheat thins. Colby. Yeah. 
or Wisconsin cold beef cheese. They also have, uh, in other countries, they have dill yeah. pickle, honey mustard, lime. We're missing out. See, those Sweet things potato. I'm interested in. That sounds great, sounds actually. Wild. I would try all of those. Cinnamon? Hmm. Excellent. All right. Um, I'm going to quickly give this one like a three and a half. Definitely better than the saltine. I would probably do the Ritz or the Club over it, but I think they do hold up. I, I don't think they're a bad by any by any stretch. What about you, Matt? Yeah, I was going to say, I think that's I think it's fair. I think it's a very fair assertion. It's, it's a finicky cracker. <laughs> like, I don't think it goes with everything, but it's good in the hummus, and it, it's very crispy. A solid three. So it's somewhere right in the middle. Yeah, I agree. Middle of the road. Three. Mm. Actually, It'd it's be got, great with stuff. It's got a little bit of a grainy aftertaste. I'm going to bump it down to a 2.5. Yeah. It's a little, little, little grainy that I'm not liking right now. Uh. I'm going to do a 2. Mm. Mm. It's, it's not bad. It's better than the saltine, but it's not really, it really, it's not really doesn't doing stand it up on its own. Fair enough. Alrighty, let's go into our next one here. We're going to go for the Trisket. One of America's favorite crackers. The only one I opened prior to tonight. I was going to say, this was a, this was everyone's favorite going into this at Sabbath Play. And I went a little different this time because um, I got a flavor for everybody. Wow. Because I thought we had all plain crackers. I'm sure we've all had plain Triscuits before. But I wanted you guys to try out my personal favorite Triscuit, which is hmm. cracked pepper and olive oil. Um, they're definitely... I, I've also had the... God, that is a loud bag. Holy smokes. <laughs> this is like the sun chip bag. Okay. It, it's aggressive. Um, I've had the rosemary I've had before and is very good. There's a tzatziki flavor I want to try, but I haven't seen it in a store. Yeah. Mm. That's peppery. Oh. Okay, I'm glad I didn't dip this one in the jam. This is not a jam. More in chocolate. Oh, oh. Mmm. But I like pepper, so... Up my alley. This is a complex one. It's got a lot of... It's got many layers to it. Mm. Now, Triscuit started by the Shredded Wheat Company in Niagara Falls. Did you guys know why they're called Triscuit? <laughs> I thought you were going to say, do you know why they're called the Shredded Wheat Company? <laughs> Gee, I can't imagine why. No, it was founded by two guys, Daniel Shredded and Steve Wheat. <laughs> they met at the gym. <laughs> they met at the gym. End of story. <laughs> um, no, do you know why they're called Triscuit? No. It's actually a fascinating story. Most people think try Triscuits 3. But there was, I, I, have, I pulled it up last year. There was a guy on Twitter who was like a comedy writer who was like trying to figure out the answer. And throughout the internet, like, nobody knew why they were called Triscuits. And so he wrote a letter to the Triscuit company. They replied back saying they didn't know why it was called Triscuit. The records had been lost. And so the guy kept doing more research, and what he found out was, and there's some early advertisements, if you go to the Triscuit Wikipedia page, you'll see it, because they were made in Niagara Falls, where they generated electricity, they said it was baked by electricity. That was like the gimmick for the smack at first, was it was like the, the electric baked biscuit. The try in Triscuit comes from electric, the T-R-I in electric, so they're really electric biscuits. Hmm. Wow. That sounds like... It sounds like the answer that somebody would have given as, like, a joke answer. And, like, miraculously gotten it right. Yeah. That Isn't that like crazy? A, yeah, wild. That is a wild story. And then the, guy, the company, like, sent an official letter to the guy being like, you actually solved the mystery. Here's some free Triscuits. Um, that's, and that's now the official Wait. story. So the, the company Triscuit was just going along with the fact that no one knew, and they were just like okay with that. They didn't know themselves. And it didn't turn it into like a marketing campaign. Oh, they definitely like, should have. 
Um, yeah, missed opportunity. No, they said no business record survived, which specifically explained the origins or inspiration for the name. We do know it does not mean three. The tri does not mean three, so it's something else. It turns out it was electricity, electric biscuit. Triscuit. Now, if you look on the back and on the side, uh, it says top it with, see this this picture here with what's on top of it? Yeah. Top it with hard body cheese, green apple, and honey. Ooh, that's wacky. With the pepper? Yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah. It looks like it's the pepper one in that image. It has yeah. little specks. That's wacky. Now, see, I went back to the Ritz, too. <laughs> Couldn't resist. <laughs> right there. I'm keeping this, this, these Reese's here in case we get another stinker. Maybe I'll try it with a saltine later. These are good, Sean. Yeah, the first one, I, I didn't think I liked it the first time. But after the second one, I think it got better. For me. You're like absolutely it. right. And the first one, back the punch. So they don't mess around with them. Mm-hmm. But also, it's garlic, onion. There's some other flavors in here. Okay, onion powder, garlic powder. Yeah. It contains wheat. That's it. I'm just a big fan of Triscuit just because I think the texture is fun. I think they're crunch nice. I, I, they're not really my favorite, like, topping cracker. Because I think they're a little too thick. If I'm going to do, like, cheese or something on it, I would do, like, a club cracker or a Ritz. But I think it's a standalone cracker. These are good. And um, this is, like, my 5 out of 5. This is, like, my my perfect cracker. What about, what about you, Colby? I think, honestly, I think I have to go back and make Club Crackers a five, and then Triscuits are a four. Because I, I think they're good with stuff. I think they're a great, like, dip cracker. Mm. I think I like those. This flavor you sent us, I like on its own, which is crazy. I think it's super tasty. Um, but, like, regular Triscuits are, like... I think pretty versatile, way better than wheat things. Oh, yeah. For like, I feel like they're the same cl- class of cracker. Like you use them for the same thing. They're way better. Yeah, I, I've had a number of the Triscuit flavors, and I've yet to find one I don't like. They do a really nice job, and they're unique because it's not just like cheese. Like they actually like <laughs> put some thought into something. <coughs> I got the Triscuit in my throat. Uh-oh. Um, wh- what about you, Matt? <laughs> well. Um, I think like Dan, I I didn't like it the first time, but I tried it the second time, and I appreciate its complexity and its hardiness. It's a hearty, meaty cracker. Yeah. It's one that I think it, it's it would be a hard, it would be really hard if not, I don't know, maybe downright impossible for me to sit and go through a whole box of these, um, just because they're they're very filling. It's a very like. Um, uh, hearty, solid cracker. I liked it. I I don't I, I don't know if it was my favorite one of the night, but it was definitely. Uh, I think I think it sounds right to put it at like a solid three point five, and that's like a highly regarded three point five. Um, it's it's the it's complex. It's deep, um, but. I and, and and maybe it's a good thing that I can't put away a whole bunch of these, a whole box of them in one sitting. But it, it like the texture, it would just take a long time, I think, to get through them. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, so that's that's probably where I would go. Yeah. What What about you, Dan? Yeah, they were good. I I put them as a four. I would eat these again. I would if I saw them in the grocery store, I would totally buy them. Uh. I don't. I don't like them as much as a Ritz or the Club, but it's really good. It's different. It's definitely the most unusual and unique one we've had so far. Uh, to me, it it remind, It's very analogous to like a potato chip, where it's like I wouldn't eat a Triscuit necessarily like with an appetizer, but to me, it is more like oh, I could grab some chips or some pretzels. Or I'm going to grab some Triscuits. Like it is a little more snacky than I think some of these other ones. Um. Well, good. I'm glad it. Uh, I'm glad that worked out. I'm going to be excited to eat more of those later. We've got one more cracker, our wild card, our hip new entrant, 
from the folks at Blue Diamond Almonds. They've turned almonds into milk. Now, they've turned them into crackers. It's nut thins. Let's, let's bust these open. This is like a space bag in here. Well, these are cute. These are little, 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 little guys. These are wheat thin size. They're round. These are just plain flavored. Ooh. You can get them oh, in nice. uh, two cheese varietals as well as sriracha and ranch. Yep. Stick your stick your nose in there and smell the bag. It definitely smells like almonds. Hmm. Do you know why the company is called Blue Diamond? I do not. I do because I looked it up right beforehand. <laughs> you do. Believe it or not. It's because they used to use real diamonds in the. Every box <laughs> will come with a diamond. That doesn't sound right. It's not named after the Long oh. Winter Song. Um, blue diamonds are apparently a rare type of diamond. And this is the only company that we've eaten a cracker from that is not owned by some conglomerate. It's a co-op. You love it's to got, see it. Also, the ingredients are pretty simple. Rice flour, almonds, potato starch, safflower oil, sea salt, and natural flavors. Well, as a supporter of riboflavin, I'm very upset. Zero. Zero <laughs> riboflavin in this. Oh, these are very snackable, though. I think the size is mm. great. I love, they're very toppable. Yeah. They're really correctly sized. Now, I'm really curious on this one, Matt, what the, the topping dipability prospects are. They're very solid. Okay. I will say that. Like, they, they, they yeah. you can really... They're thin and they're quick, well uh, structured. Assessment. I already tried the uh, I think chocolate hummus on the first one. Chocolate hummus was, was a real win for this. So, so far, chocolate hummus is, is a go. Trying the jam. I, they're very neutral tasting, not in a bad way. But in a way, you yeah, could layer think, a lot of things onto them. I think mm. they could use some more salt. Right, it is very hint of salt. Yeah, not great with the it's jam. Just a hint. It's a little overpowering, like too much jam tasting. The texture doesn't really match up with it. So far, the hummus is in the lead. Now for the honey. We got to do. I don't a think I've ever had these like fresh before. Actually, I could eat. I, I think honey could be really good. Ooh. We got our sample of honey. Mm. Mm. Yeah, honey's a bit of a problem too. Mm. It clashes. It clashes with the. Um, That's surprising because almonds and honey are such a classic the combo. They are. But, uh, texture, it's just yeah. something about the crunch. It, I don't know. I thought I thought of the three. I thought the hummus was the best option. Now, looking mm. at the back of this, I spy uh, sriracha and almond nut thins. Yeah, that could be interesting. They have a pepper jack cheese that I would love to try. Mm. So, how does this work, Sean? How, what is the process behind making these? The nut things? Yeah. <laughs> what is this sorcery? Matt, it's really easy. So have you ever seen, like, almonds? Like a pile of almonds? Yep. Okay. Now, have you ever seen those YouTube channels where they have that big hydraulic press where they crush stuff really dramatically? No. Well, first of all, you, I'll send right. you some links. Kind of... I kind of want to see it now, yeah. It's like industrial strength where you can put anything in it and it will flatten it to nothing. Um, and so they take the almonds, they put it in one of those, and boom, nothing. This sounds like a real good, like, ASMR-type experience. Just I, I bet there are people that'll just sit and watch things get crushed for hours and hours and oh, hours. And Seriously, you're going to you're gonna go nuts for this. I, I would definitely say <laughs> I might be one of those people. I very and well he, could and, be and, one of these people. And the guy, like... People pay him. It's like a fundraising thing, so he makes money, and they're like, whoever bids the most, like, can send him something, and he'll crush it. Nice. And it's pretty great. Um, 
the other thing I will say, the only downside I will say, I think this is a really great cracker. I was pleasantly surprised. The downside for me is the cost. So this was the most expensive cracker out of all of these for a much smaller box. Now, it's a premium product, um, to be fair, but it is, um, if, if you're not getting much, it's only a 4.25 ounce box where every other cracker we had was, uh, what was the other smallest? The other smallest is the Triscuit at twice as, twice as much in the box for less mm. cost. Yeah, you go say this I have eaten a ton of weight, these. Not by volume. Mm -hmm. Says it on the side of the box. Okay. These are nice. Yeah. Yeah, these were good. And I, I feel like it's not lying to me, like the wheat thins, where I, I feel like these actually are a little bit better for you. Not by yeah. much. Actually, it's got, now I'm looking at it, it's got more calories than. The Triscuit. But you know, Actually, it hasn't... not really. Not really. The Triscuit, because the serving sizes are way different. Wildly different. Yeah. I would say, though, these have a, a decent aftertaste, too. That's what bothered me about the wheat thing, is they were have it for the very yeah. heavy. These are, like, very light um, in the aftertaste. Mm. I still wish they had more salt. Yep. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, mm -hmm. they do need... They're a little lacking in the salt. Hint of salt. Nice. I like it though. But the texture is different. I, than... I like how crispy they yeah. are. That's really yeah. nice. Because it, it's, Me it's too. reducing that, like the club mm. crackers or the Ritz, like when you're biting, if you don't eat a whole one, you bite into it, you're getting crumbs, you're getting crumbles. With these, they snap really nice. It's kind of like a, a different take on what a cracker is. It plays with our expectations of crackers. I like that. Yeah, that's good. Um, well, guys, that's that has been the cracker taste off. We've tasted all of them. Save the bees. Save the bee. Hashtag save the bees. Um, <laughs> that's what it says on my honey. We're all the way through, did so we, why don't we... Um, did we grade the uh, nut thins? We did not grade the nut thins, Matt. Where would you put these? I would say that you said the package is what two point five, four point two five ounces. Four point two four point two five ounces is actually exactly where I would grade these. These nuts. <laughs> I, would say, I think that's a really fair grade out of five because I think that they the taste is interesting. I think like Colby said though, they they are lacking a little bit. Of, wish they had a little bit more salt. The texture is unique. Give it bonus points for that, and the size is perfect. It's perfect and snackable size. I think it's a, it's a respectable four point two five, and uh, I I would like to I would I would like to, I'm interested. I would like to try some more flavors of these. I'd like to explore the other options we've got going on here. Yeah, I, I'll agree with you on the score. I think you're I'm right in that same ballpark as you. And to me, this is the kind of thing where. I don't know if I would ever buy a box for my house, but if I were, like, on an airplane and they offered me a small bag of these, I would be thrilled. Or, like, you ever go to, like, an event where there's, like, some snacks laid out, like, a small individual serving of these would be really good. Because they're not heavy, they're not overly flavored, uh, but they are filling. So, um, I'm, I'm definitely, I was pleasantly surprised. What about you, Colby? Yeah, I'm feeling the same thing, same way. <laughs> I just ate a ton of those right now. <laughs> they're very and like I like the the like they're like actually crunchy. Yeah. Like beyond like they're they're beyond crispy into crunchy. Which I like. Um uh, but I think I'm gonna give them a three in that they need more salt. Totally. If they had more salt, they'd be awesome. I think. Maybe other flavors are better. I don't know. Definitely. What about you, Dan? Yeah, I give them a three. Very middle of the road for me. I'm super interested in the sriracha ones. Yeah, and they need something. They definitely need something on them. I, and I, it might even this might even be the best cracker of all these for dipping because they they're so rigid. Yeah, they yep. don't have anything to I dip bet, with. Even like a salsa or something, I bet would be really interesting on these. 
Mm. I do have salsa. I could try that. That that might be cheese, like a nacho cheese. Oh yeah. Uh, basically, anywhere you'd use a tortilla chip, because they're they're kind of similar. Um, very interesting. Well, guys, that was six cracker varieties. Our salt, salt levels are through the roof. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and do uh, an ultra quick wrap up on these, uh, where each of us can sort of. I'll, I'm happy to go first. I think, other than the salt, I don't think there were really any outright losers for me. Um, in in the box, I will probably eat some amount of all of these. I tend to like the more exotic stuff better, so I thought the nut thins were really good. I thought the triscuits were excellent, um, but I was really pleasantly surprised by the club crackers. I think that was probably my favorite basic cracker. The Ritz were good. I thought the club were better because um, they were a little bit thinner um, and a little more classic cracker. Um, so overall, the nut thins were a bit of a mess. Um, but definitely the the trisket and the uh, and the nut thins were were great. So overall, I, I was happy. I was excited to go through and eat the rest of these. What about you, Matt? Yeah, you know, I was I was coming in here really not thinking my opinion of the crackers was going to change all that much. But uh, I would say, yeah, uh, the Ritz took a big um, Ritz took a, maybe a small step down, or if not, just to give way to Club. Club took a huge step up. I was, yeah. I was surprised how much I really enjoyed the club crackers. And then Wheat Thins, yeah, a couple steps down. I was not was, – I, I enjoy Wheat Thins on their own, but stacked up against these other uh, powerhouses, it's um, it's not it's not my favorite. It, it, it feels like a little bit of a sham now that uh, the secrets have been revealed. They're not as good for you as they, as they claim. So, uh, yeah, the club, clear winner for me. But the, I was I was happy also to try the nut bins. I think that they were not quite what I thought they were going to be. I thought they were going to be a little bit more like nuttier, yeah, like flavored, but uh, still pretty good and pretty snackable. I wouldn't I wouldn't be averse to to buying them. And what and, and we'll just ask Matt what was the what was the uh, uh, spread winner of the evening? Oh, uh, I, I you know I wasn't keeping track, but. Uh, I always love I, I love good jam. I think the jam, the grape jam, probably took the took the. I think there were there were the it was the fewest of these crackers. Seemed like jam went with nearly all of them, except for the saltines. But that's the saltines problem, isn't it? <laughs> so. It stands alone. Hmm. Um, excellent. What about you, Colby? Uh, let's see. I agree about wheat thins. I guess you never eat wheat thins if there's another option. Yeah. To like eating wheat thins next to other crackers. Can't believe we've been wasting our money. <laughs> um Yeah, club crackers, wow. Like I said, I assumed that the club crackers were gonna be those like oblong Ritz Ritz crackers, but they're so much more. They're like they're, they're like they make the Ritz crackers seem like mushy almost. Yes. Which I didn't think of it that way before, but wow. So good. And then, yeah, I was pleasantly surprised with the nut thins. I thought like going into the nut thins, I thought that was going to be like one to zero range, like disgusting. They're pretty good though. Excellent. Uh, what about you, Dan? Yep, Club Cracker is a good discovery. I I can now get a uh, social snacker at, at probably any grocery store. So that's good to know. Uh, the Wheat Thins are the big biggest loser. I remembered liking them a lot more than I did. Um, yeah, but otherwise, yeah, not not surprising. Club, Club Crackers, Ritz Crackers really good. Wheat Thins, Saltines, not so much. Nice. Well, I like when we can find some agreement. Um, that's excellent. So, can I tell you? Yeah. Can I tell you a secret about the uh, these crackers? What? My new plan. Uh, I am gonna go out tomorrow and buy like a variety of dips, and I'm just gonna polish these crackers off like uh, in the subsequent weeks. I have a feeling that um, I may not be tossing these like I did some of the cookies from from uh, the prior <laughs> challenge. <laughs> the prior uh, Sean Sean Vember. I think that these crackers are probably going to get going to get eaten. 
Good. I'm planning yeah. on taking some of them and um, I'm going to grind them up and use them as uh, breading for probably some chicken or something. Um, use, use them in some kind of recipe. Oh, that's not a bad idea. I, I thought you were going to say you were going to grind them up and then use them as like a trail when you go out into the forest. <laughs> to, like, um, to lure or children. Or Gretel or style. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mainline crackers. Yeah, there are a um, lot of them. No doubt about that. I'll feed them to the birds. Um, yeah. Can birds eat crackers? Is that eco friendly? I, don't, or is I that don't think breads. I don't think breads are good for that. Because we're not supposed to feed them bread. Well, they I, don't exist think, in so nature. Crackers. Like you probably shouldn't feed. Yeah. I'm not an expert, but my like dumb guy brain says like don't feed animals anything that they wouldn't find in nature. I mean, we as people probably shouldn't be eating anything you can't find in nature. Like. We can fence. find bread. You can find the ingredients of bread in nature. Well, it's you just say that about human a lot ingenuity of that put them together. I can find the ingredients for for radon, but I probably shouldn't be eating it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? This is true. I don't know if the two things are equivalent, but oh. this so, is true. So, just find ray, radon lying around. Um, I don't know. Have you ever tried radon, Sean? It is one of my favorite Maybe snacks. That's what we're trying next year. That could be the next. <laughs> Next Sean Vember, yeah. I'm going to send all you guys like a chemistry of... <laughs> kit. <laughs> we're going to drink these. We're going to taste it. We're going to taste it. You guys, you guys ever have raw potassium? Well, I drank this one, and I can't see out of my left eye, so I'm going to have to go ahead and say that's a two out of five on the scale. Yeah, unfortunately, the, the show was cut early due to mercury poisoning, but we were close. Check it out, guys. I'm weeping blood. <laughs> Hardcore. Um, no, guys, listen, Colby, Dan, it was so great having you guys here um, to join us once again. I hope this was uh, lived up to to all the hype. Oh, it did. Yes, been, thank you for having been us. Been looking forward to it. Is there uh, is there anything you guys would like to plug? No. No. Don't panic. There you yeah. go. Don't panic. It's a website that Colby made. I know Matt's a big fan of the show. I am a listener. I'm a frequent listener. I Fuck yeah. I, I actually use you guys to learn more about NFTs. I, uh, oh, do you, I, do you want to do a double honest, crossover? So little, we can do a crossover, yeah. I would I would you wanna that. you wanna buy an NFT with us next week? Yeah, so buy an NFT? Yeah, Matt doesn't know about <laughs> I didn't brief him Matt, so for next for Monday's show. <laughs> We, we, we're doing these, like, challenges now. We, we've decided every so often we're going to try them. And so for Monday, all three of us were each buying... We're all finding and buying NFTs and talking about aren't, our experience on the show. Aren't, NF, no, aren't they, like... I could be wrong. I might be wrong about this, but aren't they, like, millions of dollars, the NFTs? Not or all can you of get, them. You can get cheaper? Okay. okay. No, well, you can see, definitely... that's the thing, is anyone can make an NFT, so there's... Stupid NFTs out there. That are <laughs> okay. Cheap. Spoiler Isn't alert. Isn't this like being part of the problem, though? It, it, Aggressively, yes. yes. <laughs> the, yeah. I, we're it, willing to buy into gonna, a They're going to need more of them. They're going to keep mm-hmm. making them, and then. Okay. But yep, it's, it, I'll do anything for the show. So. Man, have you ever like bought <laughs> a do stock it. in the stock market and been like, I don't know what I actually own? That's kind of like buying an NFT. Right, right. But even even less. Even it's, worse. It's, <laughs> yeah. It, there's no like accrual though. Like you're not getting more. You're just you own something now, but and you you're hope not it like, goes up and, money off of it uh, uh, until there's you sell no, it. Like, now there's no equity. No, at all. Okay. You know this. This could also be a, an, a, an additional crossover where Matt, maybe in a future episode, you and I could create have a creative challenge to create our own. Podcast Ooh. NFTs and see if we can sell. Yes, them. that, and that is right. Program yes. them. Don't you have yeah. to? Yeah, yeah. Why? Yeah, so, okay. So it's easy. So so Matt and I are going to just creatively brainstorm. Right. You two figure out how NFTs work. I completely <laughs> take back everything right. I said. NFTs are awesome and great. And <laughs> soon for sale on the website. Very much. Okay. They're the yes. future. We'll, sell, we'll, we'll make a whole gift shop of NFTs. I mean, I'll sell you Matt. Just, I don't care. That's listen. <laughs> it's not it's something expensive. you could just, I guess, do. 
You can just do that nowadays. You, you own the sell virtual rights license to, to me. Yeah, thirty percent. You get thirty percent ownership, and uh, <laughs> now twenty percent of my microphone. Now, we can add a feature to the website such that every episode that gets uploaded becomes an NFT, and people can buy it. That's right. Yep, and they they own they own our licensing rights. Right. <laughs> Someday when we trans so su- successfully transcribe the entirety of Don't Panic, we can sell NFTs for for like sound like clips from the show. Yes, I think that's gonna be amazing. I want to sell the O in Don't Panic. <laughs> Let's just sell the right. Letter. We can sell one, every letter, and then collectors wow. will want to have all of them. That's what I'm learning about NFT journey. Is it's it's not about what you sell; it's about how few of them there are that make them rare and expensive. <laughs> right, uh, but that's going to be fun. So, folks, definitely check out the Don't Panic feed um, for for that episode. That's going to be a treat. Of course, this show is up for debate. It is Sean Vember, which continues on, uh, and we've got some great programming next week. Uh, Dan and Colby actually previewed a little bit of our all audio trivia challenge a couple weeks ago, um, so they have a bit of an idea what's coming up. But Matt, you're going to be put head to head on some pop culture audio challenges. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, so check that out at UpForDebate.tv or subscribe to the show uh, wherever you get podcasts. You find us on Meta, right? Yeah, absolutely. We're in the Metaverse. You can check us That's out there. That's our Meta page. Absolutely. In all three dimensions. <laughs> um, where, where else would we be? And, of course, uh, follow us <laughs> at UpForDebateTV on uh, Twitter. Email us up for debate, up for debate TV at gmail.com. Is Up for Debate a Spotify exclusive yet? No, what's the opposite of an exclusive? Like, like we're so not exclusive. We're not even on we're Spotify. Un- what do you un- call that? Unsclusive. It's a riboflavin. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we're on the riboflavin podcast network. <laughs> They're doing podcasts now. Uh, Brought to you by the fine folks at riboflavin. <laughs> Have you had your ribo today? <laughs> <laughs> I, I could see, I could see the podcast dad. That thing writes itself. You know, Matt. The other day, I was trying some riboflavin, and uh, boy, was it great! Can't spell flavor without riboflavin. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now, for the next thirty days, our that listeners can get thirty percent off their next order of riboflavin when they use offer code debate. Writes itself. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thanks to Colby and Dan, and of course Matt and myself for being here this week. Another Sean Vember is in the can, but we'll be back next time with another great episode. Until then, thank you, and we'll see you on another one. Now, I've got too much salt. I don't even know what I'm saying. See you next time. <laughs>